I'm super excited uh, to be moderating this uh, amazing panel. Um, before we get started, let me introduce uh, our amazing panelists. Um, first, on my right, uh, Pinchas Buchris, uh, who for many Israelis does need introduction. Uh, Pinchas is a managing partner at uh, the State of Mind Ventures, which is an Israeli-based early-stage VC fund. Uh, previously, he was managing director of the Israeli Ministry of Defense, as well as head of this prestigious 8200 division in the Israeli Defense Force, where he initiated many of Israel's cyber programs to date. Um, we also have uh, Dr. David Shkharia. David is heading the Counterterrorism Executive Directorate branch in the United Nations Security Council, providing the Security Council policy advice on global counterterrorism issues, including um, the terrorist use of technology. Previously, he was lead attorney at the Supreme Court Division uh, in the Attorney General's Office in Israel. Uh, Dr. Shkharia is also a board member of several counterterrorism research institutions in the USA, Europe, and Israel. And finally, and definitely not least, uh, we have Lior Div. Lior is the CEO and co-founder of Cyber Reason, an amazing startup that's offering um, endpoint detection and response platform that identifies in real time all the elements of cyber attacks for effective response. Uh, his company has raised $90 million to date, is going fantastically well, his headquarters in Boston, and he was previously a commander at the elite cybersecurity unit in the IDF. Um, myself, I'm Gil. Uh, co-founder of AppWest Labs, which is a Silicon Valley-based seed fund that invests in Israeli startups. We have invested in close to 70 companies in the past six years, a few of them in cyber security, including um, Sentinel-1. So let me maybe provide a little bit of introduction. Um, so we have all witnessed uh, an increase in high-profile attacks and hacks. We've all seen what happened in the last US and French election. Um, last Friday, as Nimrod mentioned, was a huge wake-up call, I think, for everyone um, with regards to uh, global-level uh, attacks. Um, so if, if it's okay by you, I'd like to start with a, a technical question. Um, so what the heck is going on? Like, really, what's going on here? Um, uh, the previous guest was asked what keeps him up at night. Um, if it's okay, my goal for this panel is to allow me to sleep better at night. If you can end the next 20 minutes by promising that things will get better, that would be great. Um, so David, I'll start with you. Um, so is what we're seeing uh, the new normal? Everything that's going on last Friday, is that the new normal? How do you foresee these kinds of threats evolving? Well, <clears throat> thank you, Gil, and uh, thank you all for coming. Um, if you want to sleep better at night, uh, probably take Ambian. I would not be able to provide you some good advice on this. Um, we, we are deeply worried about what's happening around us. And um, the reason we are so worried is because when we analyze terrorism uh, trends and threats, we usually look at three elements. We look at the element of intent, at the element of capabilities, and on, at the element of response. And in all three, we see uh, a rising um, a concern. I'll start. I'll say a few words about the, the intent. Clearly, um, terrorist terror organizations, and in particular ISIL, have shown great interest and intent to commit attacks through uh, the internet. Um, and when I'm talking about attacks, I'm not talking about denial of service attack or attacks of uh, defacing, which used mainly for propaganda purposes. I'm talking about attacks that may have kinetic results that may end up with uh, endangering the lives of people. Um, ISIL in particular um, have, uh, recruited hackers with this uh, aim in mind. Um, it also uh, tracked scientists, including nuclear scientists in Europe, with a vision to uh, try to get access to uh, nuclear facilities. So the level of intent is very high. Fortunately, as far as we know, and again, I'm not suggesting that we know everything, um, the capabilities of terrorist organizations are not that high. Um, the, the attacks committed uh, thus far have not been so sophisticated. The problem is that the sophistication, the level of sophisticated attack, like the one we saw last week, um, does exist. And it mainly exists either in the hands of criminals or at the level of states. 
The challenge is what will happen if at some point this information, this technology, or this capability will be leaked either for commercial reasons, economic reasons, or for ideological reasons to the hands of terrorist organizations. So how do nations need to prepare for this? What do they need to do? Um, what they need to do, we, we divide the response into two areas of uh, response. First, at the technological level. Here again, I'm not providing many good news. Um, the technological awareness on many, in many states is not at the level that it should be. Some countries have developed amazing capabilities. Um, let's remember that 80% of critical infrastructure is at the hand of the private sector. It's not governed by or owned by the state. It's owned by private sector companies that have their own interests and their own limits. And they may not be seeing the picture as a government um, may see in terms of what are the implications of a failure of a train system or of a GPS uh, that may lead uh, to an attack. Just imagine we all talked about the attacks in Paris, in Nice, but what if the next attack will be committed by an automated car that could be hacked? What if uh, an airplane GPS control system can be hacked? What if an icebreaker ship that is ran by a nuclear reactor is somehow being hacked? And Pinchas, I know you've seen your fair share of this activity in your previous roles. What's your take on it? What do nations need to do? How does this trickle down to companies? How do they need to change the way they prepare for this? Uh, first of all, thank you for coming. Um, now I feel under investigation this light to my face. Um, with, uh, with your permission, I will elaborate about your uh, first question. Please. And I can tell you, you can't sleep at night at all. Uh, in my understanding, we are in ongoing the cyber, uh, cyber, uh, the cyberspace is ongoing war zone. Every country, most of every country in the world, invest a lot of efforts to build cyber attack capability. He mentioned IS, 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 and all the others. This is a kind of uh, super sophisticated war that happened in the shadows. I would like to raise a few events that happened 2012 till today. In 2012, a, terror, a cyber terror organization that may be connected to Iran attacked the infrastructure refinery of, of uh, Saudi Arabia, closed it. In 2014, um, someone maybe in North Korea attacked Sony. A few days later, the internet of uh, North Korea shut down for a few days or a few hours. In 2016 and 17, we have event of involved in uh, election. And the last weekend, what we can see that every time someone put a red line and later on come another event that passed this uh, uh, red line. What amazing the last uh, attack in my understanding so far is still under, under a lot of investigation and the uh, expertise find way to connect it another one more time to North Korea. But they allowed themselves to attack hospitals in spite of the meaning of it, they are going to risk life of people. This is not only getting money, yes, getting money, but on the other balance is people can be killed or something like that. So we have to be prepared, and I believe this is not the, this is only the beginning of birth that we are going to see, and I believe that it will be worse. Uh-oh. Um, okay, Leo, uh, it's your responsibility to cheer us up. So from the startup community and representing the startups, um, the must, you know, you've seen your fair share of, of this space and how it evolved since 2012 when, when you found it. What have you seen out there? How has your company evolved to deal with this type of threats? Um, hey. um, 
I think that the, first I have to agree with my uh, friends here. Um, we see um, an uptick of attack all over the place. And every time that somebody um, kind of forget that this is an evolving situation, we get a reminder again and again and again. Um, so I think that two things we need to uh, pay attention when we're talking about cyber, uh, because a lot of people are confusing between IT security to cyber security. Um, wh what we manage to do is first to create a differentiation between IT security, that this is basically all the control that a company or a government need to put in place in order to have a good hygiene of a network. This is goes to the firewalls, the antivirus, and all the things that basically this is a fixed problem that you need to make sure that you are dealing with. Um, in a sense, this is an ability to create a wall between the outside and the in inside, and this is something that is super valid and it's a market that exists. Um, the unique thing about cybersecurity is that in cybersecurity we don't have a fixed problem. We have an adversary that's moving and changing constantly. Um, so suddenly, if you're talking about our business model, suddenly the thing that I created in 2012 when I established the company becoming almost obsolete after half a year, and I need to have a business model that allow me to change what we are doing. For example, uh, when we established the company in 2012, ransomware or the phenomena that we saw on Friday basically wasn't exist, or it was existing in very minute situation. Um, Today, we are protecting against uh, ransomware, and probably tomorrow, we will need to protect against something else. So basically, we need to change the business model and the way that we are thinking about the problem in order to enable us and others to, to deal with the problem. And in addition to that, technology has changed, and you know, everybody's talking about the use of artificial intelligence. Um, do you see, do any one of you see uh, the role of AI in cybersecurity um, can we use that to be better prepared? Yeah, I, I completely believe that the answer, the short answer is yes, but there is a long answer. It's, uh, it's go, and, and the easiest way to understand it in order not to go to, um, you know, uh, uh, small details of analytics and this and that, um, I think that you can think about AI the same way w that we're thinking about uh, self-driving cars. Okay, so the technology is evolving. It will be there, but it's not there yet. So right now, we are using AI in order to assist people to make the right decision. So suddenly, we can process more than 8 million events per second and actually see a lot of things that's going on, things that a human being cannot do. But then the final decision, if it's not absolute, we give to the person in a way that the person can consume. So I believe that AI started to integrate to our life and enable us to do things that we couldn't do before. I, I want to before just before reacting on the on the AI element, you asked about the response, and you, you you mentioned the technological response. But beyond the technological response, there is the policy response, which is where much more can be done. The technology, the technology will always be a cat and mouse um, war, but on the policy level, there are two areas where we're still lagging behind, and that is first on the global level of a coordinated response, the norms, the basic norms of what is legitimate and what is not by state actors um, is, is not agreed yet and therefore makes any solutions on the policy level almost impossible um, to reach. The second area that we're still lagging behind is on what we call a PPP or public-private partnership where private companies and, uh, and public sector seek together and identify together both the vulnerabilities of the governments and the vulnerabilities of the private sector and work together on a common solution that actually improves the, the business model of the private sector and the national response to or resilience to any such threats. Got it. So, so I hear, you know, there's an definitely need for lots of solutions out there and the threats levels are high. But at the same time, according to CB Insights, those cybersecurity funding deals uh, reached a record high last year, specifically in the third quarter, which was a record-breaking quarter. Um, there was a notable slowdown in the last quarter of 2016 and the first quarter of 2017. Um, why are investors shifting away from investing in cyber? Is there a shift? Um, and what are the implications of this, Pinchas? I don't think that investors are shifting aside. 
but I think that entrepreneurs and uh, cyber startup should think, should rethink about the solution that bring to the to the market. I can tell you that in the last uh, year I saw a lot of uh, cyber startup, but does nothing new. So they came with the same point solution, and today point solution is not good for the for the companies, organizations, something like that. So. I believe that after eating and com coming with more sophisticated solution that create integration in the organization, I think uh, the investor will continue and I believe that they continue. And, uh, and the threat of cyber is not going to over. It's going to be with us for many, many years from now to the end. And, I don't be, and this is a real threat and we should continue to invest, and I believe that the, invest, the investment come back to the, to the sub is already there, but now it's peak of a down peak that uh, for one quarter, two quarter, but I believe we are there. So, so for the last question, um, where, what are the areas that you think entrepreneurs and maybe investors should, fo should focus on? Where are some of the imminent challenges in this industry? And I'll, maybe each one can you know, say where you think uh, the opportunities to innovate and invest in are? So, uh, I think that us as a company, when we started till today, we, we shift completely the business model. So, at the beginning, it was really a point technical solution. After that, we added services and intelligence group to, to what we are selling today. Um, and the reason is that uh, there is a huge need from the customer base that basically saying, okay, we don't really know how to deal with it and we don't want to layer another and another and another technology solution on top of each other. So basically, the request is, if you're dealing with the cybersecurity side of the house, please give me a solution that is more holistic, that can actually identify an adversary in the environment and basically answer a very simple question. Am I under attack right now? And if the answer is yes, what should I do? And please be very detailed about it. And if you have people that actually can execute it, Please let them do it. So we are really moving from actually being a technology-only companies to companies that actually solving a problem or, or a business risk and not just a, te a technological problem. So it's really moved from IT to, to risk of the business. Um, I, I would highlight three areas. One is clearly the Internet of Things, um, which represents enormous vulnerability. Um, Second would be the protection of critical infrastructure, which relies heavily on all systems that with many uh, vulnerabilities that could be used for conducting major attacks. And third area of counter, sorry, um, I think the, the, the artificial intelligence that will allow um, security services and governments to find that person that, seem, that sits right now in front of his computer and planning something bad um, is something that represents a huge potential because a uh, human intelligence can, can be very, very limited, uh, can have very limited effect when it's a person in front of computer. And today, a person can do all the terrorist cycle from radicalization, recruitment, financing, training, preparation, and glorification just by sitting in front of his computer. This is an area where artificial intelligence solutions could be immensely viable. Final word, Pinchas. I, I see that yeah. we are out of time, but I totally agree. AI and machine learning is one of the most excited uh, uh, technology that uh, startups should use. Uh, I believe that the hacker is already there, and we, uh, later on, it's not. The last attack was only kind of phishing, but I believe that the sophisticated and the smart uh, hackers will use machine learning and AI capability to attack us. And this is, will change all the game. All the, all the IoT that is coming to the, to the market, the IoT device can't be secured. They are a small, small CPU, small uh, disk place, uh, and all the others. And if millions of uh, sensors will connect to the internet, this is going to be the only gray of the hackers. And this is the meaning as and we have to be prepared for that. So they will be going to CVS to buy sleeping pills. I'd like to thank my amazing panel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.